we have often, like when working with Chris Stapleton, um, the last two records I did with Chris, um, if anybody's ever heard of it, there's a record called From A Room, Volume One. That record is entirely live. Every single bit of it, except for the shaker and tambourine. Because the drummer and Dave Cobb played tambourine. Morgan Fairchild, who normally, or Morgan Fairchild, do you hear that? Morgan Stapleton, not Morgan Fairchild, I don't know where my brain went. Morgan Stapleton, uh, at the time, they were, uh, Chris and Morgan were moving their house. And so she wasn't available for the sessions. And she normally plays tambourine, and she's great. So um, we didn't record tambourine live. And we didn't record her voice live. We overdubbed her in, in the spots because she wasn't there. So uh, Dave Cobb and uh, Derek Nixon, the drummer, played Shaker and Tambourine on the record. So we'd cut the track. We'd figure out if we liked every bit of the take, because sometimes we might like the chorus from the take before. And then just like tape, we'd cut the chorus, the whole chorus, and put it in. Or Chris, like on one song, he had a, a vowel that he didn't like the tuning of. Just it was a it was an ah or something. It was something in a song. He just didn't like where it went. So I found the take before it, cut that sliver out, and put it in, just like we used to do it with tape. Shuffle mode. Shuffle. So shuffle edit. All right. But basically the whole record was played and sang on the floor live. I've never made a record that's actually that live. He played and sang every single song live. Volume two, the second one, the same thing. So we overdubbed a couple of guitar solos. But that first record is, that, that from A Room is entirely live. And when you're making a record like that, you know, it's maybe 20 tracks, the whole record. I had a stereo room mic in the room at RCA. I had a kick drum mic, kick drum channel. It's two mics, but one channel. One snare, toms, two channels. Overhead, two channels. Oh, and hi-hat, because you got to record the hi-hat in Nashville. <laughs> <laughs> hate the hi-hat. But I recorded it. All right, so yeah, so that's nine tracks, I think. Bass was two channels. DI and a RCA 44 in front of the bass amp. All right. Um, guitar, uh, acoustic guitar was a KM56. That was it. One mic, acoustic guitar for Dave Cobb playing acoustic guitar. Electric guitar, this is where it gets a little wacky doodle. So, electric guitar was 163 Princeton, not a reverb, but 63 Brown Princeton which is a single 10, I think, is that right? It's a 12, 10 or 12. Guitar players, anybody? It's 12, I think, right? Four microphones. Okay, so, yeah, four microphones. U67 and a 57 on the right side of the cone, and a 57 and a Reuter 121 on the left side of the cone. Left and right guitar, four channels cut to two. So left guitar, right guitar, because he's the main guitar player. There isn't any other instruments. There's no B3, there's no piano, there's nothing. So his guitar lives here, kind of a little more actually over on this side a little bit, on the right, favors the right. And uh, actually it wasn't a 57, it was a BK5. Those of you know BK5. Uh, it's BK5 and a Royer. Um, and then his voice is two microphones. So a U47, and a Colts, 4033, or 4038, what is it? 4038, is that right? Yeah, Colts. Um, recorded in a strange way. I, I, I want to give you guys a great tip. If you want to record vocals with multiple microphones, right, or a couple microphones, or like I do a lot of rock and roll bands who want to use a distorted vocal, record it on a stereo track. Pan it in the middle. Then, Put a trim plug in, unlink it, and you can turn the left side or right side up and down, any you want to blend it. And anything you cut or edit, or even if you have to tune it, 
with some distortion on it, it'll stay phase locked, sample locked. Because oftentimes when you split it into two tracks, it gets super wonky. So just cut it on a boat on stereo track. 